arguing in the background. Raised voices. Most of it coming from Raymond Lindo. Still troubled, Edmund said, but you can guess from who. She hung up and stared at the door, wondering what she should do. Before she could decide, the door shoved open and Sarah flew in, pointing a finger at her. I heard. You better get over there. Old dog said, Dennis will drive you. She smiled, hugged the corporal, and flew out the door. Dennis drove his ram truck at top speed over the quarter of a mile to the hangar. She was out the door before it had even stopped moving. She ran into the hangar to find Lindholm with his back to her, nose to nose with the head nuclear technician. We stick to the original plan, as I hear other ones from D.C., Lindholm said. All these new results are past preliminary. In my opinion, still disputable. But, sir, I can readily modify. Nothing changes. Stay the course. Lisa strode up behind Lindahl and tapped him on the shoulder. When he turned with a look of stunned surprise to find her there, she drew back her arm and punched him hard in the face. His head snapped back and he slumped left. Wincing, she shook her head and nodded with a head tap. You were saying. What we just learned, I should be able to blow the field of our nuke to as little as a single kiloton. If we can get that bomb to blow four miles up, which that drone chopper can't reach, it should produce an electromagnetic pulse of at least 0.5 Tesla. It'll cover more than enough territory to sweep the hot zone of negligent radiation. Plus, we can get from a dental x ray. How long will it take? Still make that new deadline. She nodded. Do it. What about DC? Let me worry about DC. You kept that nuke in the air. As he hurried off, she looked at her bruised knuckles. Toughen they will not need a manicure. 2.45 p.m. Roy. Kendall watched the Tahuli drop below as the B-280 Valor fled from the sun. They had only a minute to spare before Cutter's charges exploded, destroying his macabre experiment in synthetic biology and genetic engineering. Good riddance. He returned his attention to the camp. The space was packed with people. Cutter's private helicopter had already left with a shooter in New York. Only after ferrying two flights of native workers out into the surrounding rainforest, getting them clear of any danger. He presently shared the back of the cabin with Cutter. He strapped down in his stretcher, one wrist handcuffed to a railing. An IV line ran to a catheter in the back of his hand. His deep wound still needed surgical attention, but a thick compression wrap around his chest should last until the aircraft reached the walk east of Cutter stared out the window near his head. Ten seconds. Kendall followed the other's gaze toward that cloud-wrapped summit and silently counted down. When he reached zero, a towering blast of smoke and rock shot from the sun, including the sun, turning it blood red. Thunder rolled over that shattered mountain top as if mourning the deaths of so much strange life.